materials are extremely fundamental in the definition of, uh, of space. I mean, uh, they determine how daylight or artificial light is reflected that ultimate define, ultimately defines the, the space in the end. Um, they determine your overall uh, impression of a space. They determine um, how you perceive sound, smell, all the sensoric uh, elements that are uh, fundamental for how we perceive architecture. I think that creating architecture is a fairly complex uh, progress. Uh, so there are a lot of elements going into to the start of a, of a project, uh, whether there are analysis on a sociological level or anthropology uh, from, from an anthropology standpoint or whether there are materials. But of course, when you arrive at the point where you really need to start creating or defining a space, materials are uh, essential. So considering walls, ceilings, floors, are for us the, the starting point of any architectural project. I think we often start out with uh, an actual you know, material palette. Uh, so in order to really understand how a space will be defined once it's built, we need to have actual samples of all the materials we use for the basic uh, architecture. And we work a lot with, uh, with interior architecture. And for me, the ultimate goal is that a space completely empty with no furniture, no people, nothing inside should feel intimate, welcoming, cozy, human-centric, just by the de definition of space itself and the choice of materials. For us specifying materials for any architectural project, um, we almost always consider using mainly natural materials. There is a thing with natural materials that just connects with us as humans because we are part of nature. Uh, so it kind of transcends cultural preferences and connects to everybody regardless of where they live in the world or what type of uh, architectural space uh, they, they want to construct. Uh, and I think materials like wood, they speak to us about biology, about growth, stones, about geology, about history. Uh, so there is something that is bigger than just creating a, a space or uh, using a, a certain material that can connect to us on a more emotional, um, psychological level. Using natural materials in architecture doesn't necessarily mean uh, being sustainable, but there is uh, sustainability often connected with using natural materials. Before we had this let's say, extreme focus on sustainability. We talked about some of the same things, but use different words as timelessness, as quality, and, you know, trying to go against trends or not being driven by fashion. Um, and, and the interesting thing for me is that I love how the world now focuses on, you know, sustainable production, uh, sustainable architecture. But if you make, let's say, chemically produced materials or artificial materials that are not aesthetically durable or aesthetically sustainable in the long run, it doesn't really matter. And I mean, there is just something about the cycle of life built into the use of natural materials that in itself, if used in the, in the right way and harvested in the right way, is kind of a already existing circle of life and, and that is sustainable. There is definitely a pressure, I think, uh, especially looking at hospitality projects and uh, public spaces for using materials that can live up to standards when it comes to, to hygiene and antibacterial uh, effects. Um, so there will be, let's say, a, a change, I think, in choice of materiality for architecture worldwide in this post-pandemic uh, era. Uh, I sincerely hope that it will not mean artificial plastic surfaces everywhere, uh, that you will find ways of using natural materials and uh, their inherent abilities to be antibacterial with uh, enzymes and, and, and things like that. So we won't you know, have a, a situation of hysteria where we suddenly uh, take the easy option.